This is the JG Aurora A3, a very strange 3D printer kit i3 clone that you can pick up for around 350 bucks. But is it any good? Well, as usual on Maker's Muse, we're going to find out. Welcome back to Maker's Muse guys. So JG Aurora got in touch with me and asked me if I was interested in checking out their i3 clone 3D printer kit the JG Aurora A3, which you can currently pick up for around $368 US, including shipping. So when they offered, I thought, yeah, it looks not too bad. Not the most pretty 3D printer I've ever seen, but it looks like it's a pretty easy thing to put together and pretty easy to test. Well, when they said kit, they really did mean kit. Pretty much nothing comes pre-assembled apart from the extruder assembly. The rest is all in parts and you have to pull it together. I was expecting something more like the Wan Hao i3 where the bed comes as assembly and you just put it into place and bolt it into place. Not so, everything is in bits and you have to put it together. And to help you put things together, they have a video instructional guide and some pictures. But to be honest, I found the videos went really too slowly in some places and way too fast in others. And for the instructional pictures, they seem to reference older versions in some areas and different approaches and different ways of doing things. So I kind of gave up halfway through on the instructions and just put it together how I saw fit. So the machine itself has sheet metal as the main frame. That was the main thing that grabbed my attention when they got in touch with me. But it's a really strange machine in that it's got sheet metal, metal aluminium components with 3D printed components and then injection molded components. But why are these parts pink? Well, I'll get back to that in just a minute. So in terms of putting the machine together, it wasn't too difficult. As I said, the instructions kind of sucked, but I worked through it. And a big plus to JG Aurora, they did have the power supply, which does have exposed maze terminals, but it's housed away inside the chassis. So you're not gonna be exposed to mains voltages when using this machine. And it came pre-wired, which is a big plus from me. The machine itself has an LCD interface with an SD card and it's very standard to any other i3 design I've ever used so you're going to be pretty comfortable in that regard but there's one massive thing that sucks about it. Running this machine off the SD card is crap because it's located in the back of the machine right there. So if you have this machine you have to reach behind and sort of fondle with the SD card slot to try to get it in and you have to figure out if it's you know facing the right way or not, and then you have to make sure it's latched in place. So if you have this machine on a desk, you, it, it's very difficult to load and unload SD G code on the SD card. I did try putting an extender in, and you can buy longer extenders than the one I had, so the one I had didn't reach far enough. You might want something that goes all the way to the front and puts in the front. Why they couldn't have the SD card reader actually accessible at the front, I don't know, but it makes this machine really quite a pain to actually load G code onto. So why are these parts pink? Well, during the assembly, it says to get these two linear rods and hammer them into these components to get them in place. It comes with two PLA 3D printed parts and during the process, they exploded. They were way too tight anyway. I could tell that straight away. And then getting them into place, they split and broke apart. So what I had to do is actually request some new uh, STL files from them and I'm pretty sure these are actually used in many different printers, probably even the Anet A8 probably has exactly the same as this. And I printed these out on my ever trusty uh, Up Mini 2 in pink, cheap Hobby King PLA. And they work great, and I assembled it together as normal. But that hammering action kind of took its toll on some of the linear bearings. As you can see in this photo, putting it into place, the balls fell out. <laughs> and. I don't know if that was from the shock of trying to put it into place or hammer it, or maybe when I was putting the linear rods in place, they weren't quite straight. I have never in my years of working with 3D printers and assembling machines ever had a linear uh, bearing break like that. So that only leads to me that they are very cheaply made with poor tolerances to let the balls escape so easily. So I just chucked in some other ones that I had lying around and it works fine but that's something to keep in mind. If you were buying this printer and you didn't have another printer to print spare parts or have spare linear bearings, it would have been a dud. But because I could do that, I could continue. Something to keep in mind. Okay, so what about printing? So I always start with demo G-code and that was this, a phone holder using some cheap PLA 
and for the most part it printed fine. Um, no issue at all. The bed itself, as most of these machines, is manually leveled with four spring-loaded screws, so keep that in mind, it's a bit of a pain, and it comes with this blue tape, which I am definitely gonna replace. Blue tape, you know, is crap. Um, so keep that in mind, getting the bed level correct is a little bit tricky, but once you've got it there, it's not too bad. So that printed fine. Then I tried going for broke the torture lattice cube, and actually, to be honest, printed pretty well. All these files were done with the default slicer from the Prusa edition, as if they were sliced for the Prusa Mark II. I thought that's a good analog for another i3. And overall, it's pretty damn decent. So there is some stringing, and I think that's because the fan on the Prusa i3 Mark II is a lot more powerful than this fan. So if I ramp that up, I might be able to actually remove stringing altogether, which is pretty impressive from a machine that I just kind of chucked together. Next was tolerances. So this is my new tolerance test. Actually, this is the old version. I've got a new one coming soon. And to test the tolerances, there's different gaps from 0.05 millimeters all the way up to 0.5. And I make sure in my slicer to make sure there's no compensation for that gap so I can actually effectively measure how much clearance it can achieve. So as, uh, as I slice it in slicer, the 0.05 just doesn't even get acknowledged. It's all one piece. The 0.1 is fused and the 0.2 unfortunately is also fused, but the 0.3 is fine all the way to 0.5. So I did achieve a 0.2 clearance in the Prusa i3 Mark II. So it's not quite as good as that out of the box, but it did achieve 0.3 clearance, which is very acceptable for an FDM 3D printer running a 0.4 nozzle. And finally, my detail test is the Gaia Anderson Cat. I love this cat, and it shows you a lot about how accurate a 3D printer is. So one of the biggest complaints about how this machine goes together, the belts are not able to be tensioned easily. They have a, a sort, of, sort of split in this injection molded part that then you wrap it around and tied off with a zip tie. And because of that, you can see here, it's quite loose. I've only run it a little bit and it's already looser than when I assembled the kit. And you can't really wrench on it because, you know, there's nothing to, nothing to leverage on and the injection molded part, as soon as you put the zip tie around, it tends to skip back a few, a few teeth. It's really hard to tension and that, therefore, it's hard to get this accurate and, uh, and nice and tight. So you can definitely see some layer inaccuracies on the cat. But unfortunately, there is one massive flaw with this 3D printer when it comes to its design. And unfortunately, it's completely avoidable. It just comes down to bad engineering. It is a sheet metal 3D printer. It has aluminium components, steel rods, and it's gonna be hard to demonstrate on this wobbly table, but hopefully you can see here, if I hold this part here and move this like that. Can you see that? Everything is tightened as much as possible. What's happening is this component here, the main bed and Y axis is only held in place to the sheet metal and the back and front on four tiny tabs. It slots in place and you tension up uh, the nuts to it in place. Because of that, there is very, very little resistance to torsion in this area. So you hold it in place and the whole frame, the whole frame, can twist and bend, and that means you're gonna get terrible inaccuracies on this 3D printer, especially as you get to a higher height, as that becomes more pronounced. It's got no strength, no strengthening at all to stop this happening. The Wanhao i3 and the Wanhao i3 Plus, all those machines have sheet metal all the way to the front of the bed, and it's very much integrated. You only use four screws to hold it in place, but it is way stiffer than this design. And even the Cetus, the whole thing hinges off a very small amount of sheet metal, but everything moves together. With this, the gantry is moving independently to the bed, and it's gonna severely affect your printing quality, as you can see on this poor cat. Okay, so where does that leave us with the JG Aurora A3? So, as I said, the kit itself went together pretty easily. It's a strange mishmash of sheet metal, injection molded parts, uh, <laughs> aluminium parts, and 3D printed parts. And from the looks of it, they're slowly improving the 3D printed parts with injection molded or metal parts, looking back on some of their previous instructional photos, but the design is just not very good. Without some serious modifications, this machine is not gonna be very accurate because of that inaccuracy with the head over the bed, over the print bed, and you're gonna to have to do some serious modifications to strengthen it, which isn't a bad thing. Most low-end i3 kits need modifications, but I expected a lot more from a sheet metal design than the accuracy that this machine is getting. You're probably gonna get more accuracy out of an acrylic kit and more rigidity than this thing's giving me, which is really sad to say. 
So thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this video on the JG Aurora A3. There's a link in the video description if you want to go pick one up. As I said, it's, there's, it's ripe for improvements as are many i3 designs. You could hack it to your heart's content. And if you want to see future 3D printing tips, tricks and reviews on Makers News, hit that subscribe button, helps us out a huge amount. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Happy printing guys, bye. He has placed satellites into orbit.